Hearthstone just announced a new game mode called Classic, which will feature the original 240 cards as they were at release. Which means that you're going to have all sorts of unnerfed cards, you're going to have all sorts of Hall of Fame cards that are going to be great. And in today's video, we're going to go over that, uh, just focusing on that aspect of the announcement that happened. Not going over, you know, the whole Classic Basic rework and all that. This is just focused on the Classic format and what I expect to be the best deck. Now, at first glance, you might think that this format will be figured out on release given that it's, well, six years old or so, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that that's, that's not exactly true, right? The metagame that they uh, picked, which is just at release, only existed for a very short period of time. Even though it was the original cards, it only existed for uh, from about j the June patch, initial release, to Curse of Nax Ramus in July uh, 22nd, I believe, was the release date. So. There's not a lot of uh, exploration that was in this initial format with the nerfs in place. Even though it looks like it could be solved very quickly, uh, I think it could end up being a pretty interesting format. Starting off with Face Hunter, uh, Control Player's Bane since day one. There are quite a lot of changes to this one, notably Hunter's Mark for some reason, originally costing zero mana. Starving Buzzard being a two mana 2-1, two comboing with Call of the Wild for insane amounts of card draw on an aggro deck, two mana Lepernome, and four mana Leroy, which is really just going to be amazing in a variety of control mid-range and aggro decks. This deck is likely to be the frontrunner aggro deck in Classic. Going into the big bad itself, you guessed it, Miracle Rogue. Uh, this deck tries to draw through its whole deck and kill over one to two turns, sometimes with the help of Maligos, most notably just with Burn, Leroy, and Shadow Step. With Unearthed Auctioneer being a 5 mana 4 4, actually not that easy to remove, and also with Conceal to protect it, and Unearthed Leroy with Shadow Step and Unearthed Cold Blood, this deck will likely be a juggernaut. Don't let the OTK potential uh, fool you, I think this is likely going to be the most difficult deck to pilot optimally in the new format. So even though it's very, very strong, it might have a lower ladder presence at, at least at the beginning because of how difficult it is to, to pilot correctly. You know, when do you play your auctioneer? When do you want to protect it? When do you have to just, you know, go in and hope to get there? Uh, a lot of those things take time to learn, and most players, at least initially, are not going to know the answers to those questions, making it, I think, one of the most difficult to play decks at set release. On to Priest, where Thoughtseal 3 and Shadow Madness at 4 still leads to you not having a fun time. Priest stealing your stuff since day one. How fun. Realistically though, this deck has uh, unnerfed powered shield and can leverage the strong Hall of Fame legendaries. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be that amazing. It's kind of slow, kind of clunky. From from what I've heard, Priest wasn't an amazing class uh, in Classic the first time around that it was a format, so I don't think it's gonna be that strong. But if you really have a hard on for masochism, this is your deck. Moving into Control Warrior here, this deck is really how you uh, flexed your wallet back in the day. Just trying to be a long, grindy Control Warrior deck. Some variations don't play Frothing Berserker, play more Brawl. Some play Zero Brawl at all, a bit more mid-rangey, it just kind of depends on where you want to go. Karen Bloodhoof, Baron Geddon, Ragnaros, Ysera, Alex Straza, just lots of really strong, over-the-top legendaries, even featuring Gromash Hellscream, which can be easily activated with Whirlwind and Cruel Taskmaster. Also featuring a change of Fiery War Axe going down to two mana, so making it a really strong option that this deck primarily uses to fight for board instead of just, you know, being aggro and going face. Moving on to mid-range Paladin uh, that achieved rank 1 EU in the hands of Kalento, really abusing two mana quality with Consecration and Pyro to steal the board back from your opponent, play solid stat and neutral minions, which is a pretty common theme you'll see. Back in the day, the neutral cards were really busted uh, in comparison to today, and were really the, the front runner of strong cards being run. So a lot of these decks have a lot of similarities, which means that, you know, once you craft your Ragnaros, or once you craft your Ysera or your Alex Straza, you can play that in a lot of different archetypes. And Noble Changes being the aforementioned uh, Koala being 2 mana, Knife Juggler having that third power of attack being a little bit more aggressive, and also Hall of Fame cards, Acolyte of Pain, and Azure Drake, which you'll see in, in a lot of decks. They're very, very strong cards. Onto Ram Drew, which could be built in uh, two uh, different ways, notably uh, Force of Nature, Savage Roar endgame, notably Force of Nature costing 6 mana instead of 5, but granting charge, which allows you to go for an over-the-top burst finish. Also, there's a more uh, controlly variation that wins with, you know, a full 4 Ancients, uh, Cenarius, a little bit of a slower deck also playing Faceless Manipulator for some value. Notable changes, I think Druid is about the, the most nerfed class uh, for in Hearthstone for this, uh, I believe, I might be wrong, let me know in the comments. But, I mean, you're going to have Innervate producing 2 mana, Wild Growth being only costing 2 mana, right? Nourish being 5 mana instead of 6 mana. 
and also Force of Nature giving charge. Either way you build it, I think Druid's gonna be very represented at the beginning of this format. Moving on to Freeze Mage, uh, I don't think this deck has any nerfs. I might have missed some uh, in my relatively limited research, <laughs> but it does have a total of four Hall of Fame cards, which I think is the most of any deck that I'm featuring here. With Ice Lance, Ice Block, Azur Drake, and Acolyte of Pain, it definitely is really, really strong, even though it didn't in, uh, experience any, you know, small nerfs. Uh, I think it's a little bit lower power level on average than the other strategies, but I mean, Ice Block is a really broken card, so I definitely think it can still be very strong in the format, if not, you know, necessarily tier one. Going on to our Warlock deck of choice, I chose a really uh, classic control archetype. Get it? <laughs> ba -dunch. The deck is Handlock, and it really leverages uh, the, sh the powerful neutral cards more than any other deck, I think with the uh, best hero power in the game, especially whenever you account for Molten Giant. This deck also allows for Leroy, Faceless Manipulator, and Corrupting Mist as a really strong combo finish, as well as Jaraxxus, as well as just playing big giants. This deck notably features multiple Hall of Fame cards in Mountain Giant and Molten Giant, and also features uh, Iron Beak Owl at 2 mana, which is pretty strong. This deck will definitely be good uh, looking at control metas, I think, definitely with multiple strong win conditions. Uh, and a lot of ways to summon big, difficult to deal with boards. It's going to be a juggernaut of the early classic metagame. Finishing off with Midrange Shaman with 3 mana Hex, 1 mana Rockbiter, 2 mana Flame Tongue, you too can play an underpowered midrange deck. Seriously though, I, I don't think have high hopes for this deck being very good. Uh, from what I looked at, it wasn't super represented in classic the first time it was a format, and I don't think you're getting enough for going to the worst hero power in the game. So. It has, you know, a little bit more burst potential than the other decks, you know, notably, maybe not as much as uh, Mage, but even still, I, I don't think it's going to be that good. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're really hyped for getting to play Hearthstone at its initial release, uh, at least for a little bit, while the format is fun and, and hopefully unsolved uh, for a long period of time. Uh, let me know what you think they're going to do with this. Are they just going to leave it there and, and let it rot if the format becomes too stale after, you know, a couple a couple months to a year maybe or do you think that they'll slowly incorporate other sets to allow you to say play hearthstone at 2015 hearthstone 2016 hearthstone up to 2017 you know where will where will they draw the line are they just going to keep going through and giving you flavor of the month uh different standard formats could be pretty interesting let me know in the comments what you thought and uh, let me know of any nerfed cards that i missed and any other archetypes i tried to hit at least one deck from each class um, and I could have been totally off base on which one I thought was the best for each class, but let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you later. Uh, that it's almost certain that we can't lose the game here. Yeah, our opponent won. Okay, yeah, they salted out, yeah. I mean, you know, it happens, you know, people play Enhanced Dreadlord against your aggro deck, and, uh, it solicits that, uh, that response.